So obviously you guys are pretty chuffed about the new album For All Kings. Was the writing process for you something sort of new and challenging? Were you a bit intimidated trying to trying to work with these guys? Well, well it was different for me because I, I came from Shadow Fall, mm-hmm. which was my main band, and I, mm-hmm. that was one, one of the main songwriters for Shadow Fall. But for Anthrax on this record, I just did the lead and some overdubs. And the lead was, they were my last, my kind of last audition to finally finally be in the band. Um, I was born with them and played with them for about two years until we did the record. And then they wanted to see how I did in the studio and how I wrote the leads. And, um, and then that was it. And then it, they were happy, so <laughs> I'm still here. You had to stick around. That's pretty fantastic. <laughs> I can't even imagine that phone call. That's like every heavy metal dream. How did how did that go? Um, well, what happened was Rob Cacciano, the guy who was playing the guitar before, um, he he called me and said he was going to quit the band. And he knew we were all friends. So he asked if I would be able to finished out two tours that he, he had committed with them. Oh. And uh, I said, yeah, absolutely, man. I'd love to fucking do a couple tours of Anthrax. I love that band. So, um, so that's that. Scott called me uh, right after that and said, hey, man, I heard you, you, you heard what's going on. I go, yeah. He goes, so you can do it. I go, yeah. Um, and then I, this is the funny part. Uh, there was even no rehearsing. I jammed with Scott a couple times. He showed me how to play the riff, and then I flew to Australia and played a show with him. That is brilliant, actually. You just sort of hung out, had a good time, learned some songs, and I was like, oh, by the way, yep, yeah. we're on the road now. The the writing, the lead stuff like, uh, that you said you were doing on Raw Kings, did you have to sort of consciously switch style or sort of align yourself with Anthrax a little more, or do you think you sort of pulled their music towards what you do a little differently? It wasn't... No, it was... It's the same shit I do, so I, I, it was. It wasn't like I'm playing a totally different style of music. Uh, I, I grew up listening to that style. Um, they were an influence on me growing up, so um, I just did what what I do, and then they just kind of like would be like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, maybe do a, like the way I did the solos was they would give me the song, and uh, then I would go demo it out, send it to Charlie, and then. If, it was, if Charlie was cool with it, he'd be like, yeah, 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 that's, that's great. And then he'd send it to the rest of the guys. And if they were cool with it, we, that, was, that was done. And then um, if it wasn't okay, uh, Charlie and I would get on the phone and discuss what what direction it should go. Or him and I would get on the phone and, and we'd jam. Like, I would jam different parts. I'd be like, oh, how about this? Oh, that. And he'd be like, yeah, yeah, that part. And so that's how we did things. It's a, it's a pretty solid way to, to run things. Now, um, obviously, you probably grew up listening to a lot of the Big Four and, and the Thrash Metal Gods, especially uh, with Shadows Fall. That was, a, that was a pretty quick band at times. I'm just sort of curious. I think the world sort of moved on a little bit from the Big Four being the pillars of the genre. What are your thoughts on, on how Thrash Metal sits now as a, a genre on its own? Yeah, it's, 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 I think it's made a resurgence, Thrash Metal. I see a lot of kids, uh, they got the jean jackets with the patches on, and they're 15 years old. They got all the old school patches on so it's kind of cool to see it's like 1986 again it's a good time <laughs> some of my favorite metal came out of that yeah. era and i like it quick and dirty and fast it's that's my business yeah so growing up i mean you guys had uh, you're american you've obviously done a lot of gigs did you ever see anthrax growing up yep yeah i saw them that's so cool. that's that's what's weird man i mean i've been listening to anthrax since i was 13 Oh, so, if you told me when I was 13 years old that I, I ended up playing guitar for the band, I would, would not have believed you at all. Because that is, uh, yeah, that's a heavy metal fantasy, looking up on stage and going, I'm going to play with those guys, and you've actually done it. That's that's insane. Yeah, it's so weird, man. I'll look over on stage, and it's, and it's those guys, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that is, you're literally living the dream here. This is fantastic. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It's fucking great, man. I don't know how it happened. <laughs> Speaking of the um the the resurgent stuff, um I, I was reading that you guys are actually planning on releasing the the new one on vinyl as well. That's actually kind of cool. Yeah, uh, it seems like vinyls are making a resurgence too, and um, I, I think that's good. It 
kids are liking to actually get something physical. I think it's because it's bigger and, you know, the artwork's big and something you can hold. Plus, I mean, come on, you can't put an MP3 on that's a, a vinyl <laughs> record yeah. and say the vinyl doesn't blow it out of the way. I mean, MP3 sounds like shit next to a vinyl. <laughs> It's not quite as satisfying flicking through an MP3 library either. There's something about uh, seeing an album and, and just sort of seeing how you feel about yeah. it before you put it on, yeah. Yeah, if I listen to, if I listen to my iPod next to a vinyl record, I'm like, this thing sucks. <laughs> 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 you know? Or I listen to a vinyl record. It sounds way better than MP3. Well, yeah, we've got old Anthrax vinyls in our library, but now we're going to have new Anthrax vinyls as well. It's kind of made that comeback. It's fantastic. Yeah, I love it. I, I, I hope it keeps it going, man. I'm, I'm big in this whole vinyl research. Yeah, we are definitely with you on that one. Uh, now, you guys are definitely releasing this album we we're definitely looking forward to uh, this month, actually. But uh, are we going to get a tour out of this as well? And if so, the big question, are you coming to Australia again? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, we're already on tour yeah. for the record. <laughs> uh, we're out with Mamma God right now in the States. And then um, after this, we're going to South America with Iron Maiden. And then we're going to do all the Euro festivals this summer. And then uh, Australia will be there, I would say, probably early 2017 or sometime in 2017. Oh, gosh. That's Fantastic. actually... Fantastic. That's really soon. That's brilliant news. That yeah, is... I mean, I, I can't wait. I love going to Australia. <laughs> on the tour, do you guys um, sort of do the, the writing and playing around uh, to work on the album sort of tour? Or do you guys just sort of focus on the shows and, and go nuts and have the good time on the road? Yeah, we just uh, we just play the shows and don't don't do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it simple. Well, I mean, there's no put it this way: there's no the band's not getting together backstage and writing. It's more that happens off the road. Yeah, fair enough. So, have you been to Australia before? Yeah, man, I've been there a ton. I love it. I, I was there a bunch of Shadows Fall, and then I've been there once with Anthrax. One of the things we like to ask is, uh, we often ask about people's first gig. For for yourself, that's actually a little more complicated for us, because obviously, there'd be your first Anthrax gig, and there'd also be way back in the day when you first got on stage. So I'd be curious about sort of both of those. Do you remember the first time you got on stage with Anthrax, and what that sort of, that moment was like for you? Yeah, it was, it was somewhere in Australia. Uh, it was, we were doing the Soundwave Festival, and it was, oh, wow. we did a club, club date before, I can't remember the city, but, um, oh man, I was a wreck backstage, I was so nervous, <laughs> I had to like, I had to take like, a hundred, 105 pitches before we went on stage, I was so nervous, <laughs> <laughs> I kept going to the bathroom, I was like, but, uh, yeah, I was so nervous, and then, um, it was just like as soon as it kicked in, we started playing, and it went away. But uh, up to that, like the whole thing of flying there and getting ready, it was pretty nerve wracking. <laughs> it's a it's a big trip, yeah. I was kind of curious, how was the the sort of uh, Anthrax Legion's reaction when um when you sort of stepped in? Was it all pretty accepting? Were they keen to see what you were going to bring? I've been lucky. I've been lucky, man. Like everyone's been super cool to me. All the fans have been super nice to me, and 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 said I've been doing doing a good job. So I I got lucky. And like I said, I, I'm sure there's people out there who can't stand me, but, you know, I haven't been hit with anything on stage, or if they throw <laughs> shit, they miss, so, yeah. uh, so far, so good. <laughs> All right, now, um, how does that sort of, that, that first Anthrax gig compare to the first time you, you would have gotten on stage um, way back when you were a younger man, sort of starting out as a musician? Do you remember the first time you ever actually got up and performed? Yeah, I was 14, and I played a local club. Wow. Um, I guess I was less nervous when I was a kid because I didn't really care. <laughs> but you know, getting older, I was like, yeah, you. I, I, well, then I, you know, get into anthrax, you have to care because you can't just go up there like I don't give a shit what people like. Right? Yeah. You, you've got to play play the stuff well, and you you got to win people over. So that was the difference. When I was fourteen. I was just going up there having fun, and I didn't even care. So I think I was less nervous then. <laughs> Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, there is an awful, a lot less pressure. Yeah, there's, there's not um, a decade or two of music history behind you trying to make sure you do okay. So that's looking back. Looking forward, what are you sort of hoping to, to accomplish here with Anthrax? Obviously, coming in kind of late-ish on this album, you contributed to your leads and things like that, but is there something specific you'd like to bring to these guys and, or something you'd sort of like to add to Anthrax and the legacy that they have? I would love to just stay with them and hopefully, you know, be able to 
I had some of my riffs into, into the band someday. I think I think I've got stuff that would work pretty pretty awesome with them. So hopefully someday I'll be able to get in a room and jam with those guys and have them listen to some of my stuff. That'd be pretty amazing. Now you've got a pretty a decent background going on. Several bands behind you. Is the emphasis here on Anthrax, or are you planning on doing other stuff with other bands as well? Well, right now Anthrax is so busy. I that's the main thing. Um, when I'm at home, when we we get have a break, I was I was jamming with some other some other guys at home, a couple of other channel small guys, but it's just jamming and it's not. It's not like, oh, we got to do this, we got to do this. We just get together because we like each other and we have fun. <laughs> so I don't know if anything can ever come out of that, but uh, that's all that's going on right now. But right now my priority is Anthrax and hopefully just, just touring on this record for, for a while. That's a pretty solid one to, to, to tide you <laughs> yeah. over. Speaking of the touring, um, obviously you sort of already hit some of the, the dream points, but we're always curious about um, sort of idealized tours, um, the the fantasy tours and the things that you would actually set up if there are absolutely no limitations. So all the power in the world, who would you like to actually take on the road with with Anthrax and, and what kind of show would you like to set up for the fans? Uh, let's see here. What, like a current band or? Oh no, you can go from the past, or you can even make a couple up if you're feeling really creative. All uh, right, it's like a Sebastian Bach Israel reunion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Damn. The, like the, the uh, a solo battle between him and Rush or something could be a really incredible <laughs> moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, since, I mean, we can't bring Dime back because that would have been the one. Uh, yeah. Pantera and Anthrax. But everyone at Skid Row is still alive, so maybe maybe they can make that happen. <laughs> Skid Row would be good. Yeah, really bring the um the old eighty styles back. Yeah. <laughs> I love all this. I grew up on that stuff. It'd be um you'd have a dress code right at the door, um, no denim, no patches, no entry. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> be but uh, yeah, I mean that's I mean, I got to tour with pretty much a lot of the bands. Of course uh, Metallica would be the uh, one too. To go on tour with Metallica would be amazing, but um, between the play with Shadow Fall and Anthrax, I've toured with mostly or played shows with all my heroes. So, and, um, actually, that that question for, for, for Skid Row and Sebastian Bach probably one of the only bands that I haven't got to share a festival with or go to tour with. If you got Sebastian, you might almost be able to make it on his reality show as well. <laughs> that short-lived thing that he did for a bit there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Slave to the grind all the way through, man. Fuck the back. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh. <laughs> so picking up the guitar at a really, really early age, was there ever the idea to play with Anthrax? Or were you, you know, going to play with everyone? Or, you know, everyone has the dream. I was just hoping to, to be able to play in a band for a living. I didn't <laughs> I didn't care who. Well, obviously, I had Shadow Fall, and that, that turned into reality for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... Uh, when things started slowing down with Shadow Claw, I got lucky and this opportunity came up and it worked out. It, was, it couldn't have been better timing. Yeah, it's, um, it's all coming up pretty great. But yeah, the, uh, you guys are releasing the album For All Kings uh, very, very soon. We're definitely looking forward to that. And hopefully we will see you guys on tour in Australia very soon as well. All right, sure, man. Definitely. It's actually been absolutely great chatting to you here, John. Yeah, we will be bragging about this for weeks, maybe years. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All right, we'll um, we'll leave you to it. Thanks again, man. Thanks very much. All right, man. Take care. See ya. Bye.